work right there. I kind of like that corner. Awesome. What? <laughs> we just kind of like, what are we going to talk about? You yeah, shouldn't no. have an elk camp shirt you're, on. You're right. We're not worthy. It's embarrassing. <laughs> now, you know, I mean, let's just get going, I guess. Okay. See how it goes. I like the color on that shirt, by the way. I guess I haven't looks, seen yours yet. It good, looks yeah, good on good. me. It, well, I don't care about that, Daryl. <laughs> we'll have to have some beer of that. Yeah, I think she likes it. She said I looked handsome. <sighs> okay. Well, she's married to you. She has to say shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you're going to record all this. I am. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, I do. These are so comfortable, They're aren't they? They're super awesome. I love mine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, really cool. I was pretty, Good pretty stuff. impressed with how... And I used mine bear season a few times. Did you? Was, yeah, when it was just... Needed just a little bit. It was like yeah. the, the little chilly and sprinkling one day. And, gotcha. But it didn't get... It breezed nice. Yeah. Which is what I... I've actually just been using mine. Like, if, when, if, if it's a little chilly, we go out somewhere or something. Uh, like the dinner. Is it a dinner date yeah. thing? Yeah. Pretty much. It's super nice. nice. But good. anyway, whatever. How's everything? How's life been? Uh, good. It's been a couple weeks since we got together. I know. We interrupt this podcast for hunting season. Yeah, like, like we said, you know, we might miss a couple. And, <laughs> and, and we did. Yeah. <laughs> we did. I'm not sure if it was worth it or not, though. I know the way things went. You know, I had some challenges. Uh, situation come up that cut my elk hunting short. Yeah. But... Life happens, right? <laughs> Still. We, we both can probably use these. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. It was a terrible. That's how it goes. <laughs> nice little prop we had there. <laughs> you know, but um, talking about my elk hunt or our elk hunting, I still felt quite confident in my strategy this year, which, which was to hunt out of a... Um, over a wallow mm -hmm. with the saddle right saddle work uh, flawless no complaints at all but probably what i did learn is to to probably walk a little more because what what happened was i found a wallow had trail camera pics of elk and i didn't want to spread a lot of scent around so i didn't go exploring so as I'm sitting there that one evening, um, and my plan was to hunt the last several days of season. Like I said, I had a family crisis come up that just kind of brought me back early, which right. is life. Exactly. But um, one night, uh, one evening, I hear splash, 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 I look up, and here's a bull probably 60 yards above me. It was a small bull, but um, nevertheless, it's wallowing. And unbeknownst to me, I, from where that one wall I was sitting at, I could see like a bedding area and I'd put a camera over there. But here again, I didn't want to walk around too much and I should have. I learned that. That's one thing I learned this year. Right. Never hunted over wallows before to speak of. Mm -hmm. um, not like this. So um, I went up there and I realized that there was a couple little wallows right there that are getting used even more. And my nephew shows up and lets me know that he had walked around and there's even a more well-used wallow above that oh boy so i got by the time i got situated and that's when i got the phone call and everything where yeah yeah I had to come back so you feel like i feel you, like yeah, they, i'm they totally convinced yeah. that yeah they're being used wallow hunting i feel like it's just a waiting game it's kind of like almost hunting over antelope right um i i i totally believe I mean, my buddy killed another bull this year he's either six out of seven or seven out of eight one of the two okay. i think i know there's only one year he didn't kill and i don't know how much he sat that year that he didn't kill i don't know mm -hmm. but i think he killed like day four um which he's killed first day several times is that here in idaho yeah okay yeah so i know it's very effective um and i just thought it would be cool to do it something different it's challenging when you're solo filming. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, you know, that way you got a tree camera. Right. Um, you know, the pod thing or the, the, the tripod thing right. for the camera on right. the tree. Yeah, that's, um, you know, I had a, I was all dressed up, ready to go. But, you know, like I said, my lack of experience for, even though 
you know, I've been hunting for plenty of years. You're not a it's, seasoned it, wallow not hunter. Not a seasoned wallow <laughs> hunter. But it, there's still, you know, which is, um, I'm not kicking myself at all. Um, I did hear a few bugles, and but I didn't go chase. Um, I kind of wanted him. I, I wanted that to play out, and right. it didn't. And that was a gamble on my part. Sure. I mean, who knows? I could have went chasing them and it not happened anyway. Who sure. knows? Right. I mean, that's the way hunting goes. Exactly. Um, but, you know, even though when the weather was cooler, oh, one morning I did have a um, rookie mistake, I guess. Uh, I waited till probably 11 ish in the morning. And decided to get out and uh, check my trail camera by that one wall to see if anything came out the evening before. So you sat until 11. Yeah. yeah gotcha. Sat in the, yeah. Okay. And as I'm over there taking my cable off the camera and it makes a little noise, there was a bull coming in. Oh, no. And across the little canyon. Mm -hmm. And I heard him run off, heard his antlers hitting. Oh, no. Obviously solo. You know, you couldn't, yeah. it wasn't a herd sound. Sure. So, oops. Who knows, right? But that morning, walking in, in the dark, there was a bull going up that canyon. And I feel like maybe he went and dumped his cows off and it was coming back for a wallow. Got ya. You know, coming back to the wallow. Sure. Which I, I have seen that. I have witnessed that in the past, in the years past. Never really clicked it all together. Right. Um, but watch bulls leave their cows and go wallow hmm. and then go back to their cows so i know they do that sure and and i that may not have been the situation i mean i'm kind of guessing but i right. kind of i kind of feel like where they were where the bull came from and everything yeah that's probably what could happened have, could have been so, the, could have definitely been a learning experience this year and i'm not giving up on it i'm still yeah. gonna yeah. i'm determined Try to, to make it year. happen yep well it sounds like you got um pretty good wallow to sit on or yeah. swallows is, yeah, that, that, that area. might be the problem is picking out which one to use. i know you know because right. first part of the season there was nothing okay hitting them yeah nothing hitting that one um but who knows about the other ones they might have been getting clobbered true you know so next year i'll definitely do a little more investigating and won't be afraid to and i guess you know you get maybe i just got a little gun shy on the scent thing and and mm -hmm. you know it might have been fine just right spray down i guess try to cover my scent how long do you think scent sticks around after you walk ah uh, you know this? i think like it just depends if it i think if you get a good rain yeah true you know that can knock it right off so um i i go back to um i don't know if you've ever seen the this is one of wayne carlton's biggest bulls he killed probably about four or five years ago and it was the last evening of the season, and they kind of ran out of things, you know. They were hunting a ranch. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was a big area in New Mexico. And decided to go sit this pond, cut branches and everything. He had a tree stand. The cameraman actually was sitting in a crutch of a tree. Mm -hmm. um, and they sprayed down really good, you know, after the fact uh, with scent elimination and sat in the tree and he killed one of his biggest bulls hmm. you know right just getting set up that evening yeah or that afternoon i should say yeah so hmm. that's interesting i mean i feel like i don't know i mean i i sometimes it's like uh you know many animals look at how many look at the people that have elk in their yard and, and stuff but it seems like when you get them away there turkeys is another great example people have turkeys and you know i've told people you go going turkey hunting they're like oh they're so dumb they just come in my yard and shit everywhere blah 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 <laughs> but then you go out and try to hunt them and it's like their mind clicks and it's a different ball game oh well, that's true you know and deer even i mean you had deer in your backyard yeah but to go hunt those deer, it probably wouldn't be the same. If you went pursuing those deer, it'd probably be a different situation. Uh, that's a good point. I, yeah, I think I was going to mention that was it, their state of mind at yeah. the time probably has something to do with how much they pay attention to the, the scent around them. And you know what? I may be totally wrong on all Right, this. exactly. <laughs> you know, some things. Same. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Certainly don't know it all, but I mean, that's, 
Right. You know, I've seen it. I've seen it happen. I've seen yeah. deer at people's house. Right. And they seem almost all but tame. Yeah. But they walk out on their property and they can't get close enough for a shot. Yeah, that's true. Should have shot them from their uh, lounge chair. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no kidding anyway so yeah that was the way certain don't want to be debbie downer and by the way kudos this year there was a lot of people clobbered a lot of good bulls that's a fact and yeah I'm, I'm super excited for everybody you did you know and i i'm not disappointed um that i didn't kill one because i mean that's that's the way it goes right but um but also i i feel like if i had a little bit more time you know mm -hmm. i don't know right who knows i guess i hear you yeah next year i don't know there's always next year i suppose <laughs> <laughs> doesn't help this year <laughs> no i know and hunt season's still not over we still got hunts to go we do and stuff yeah heck yeah and then they're your elk hunting my elk hunt do we have to talk about that <laughs> If, you know, if you want to, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. Yeah. We can end it right here. That'd be, that'd be great, actually. <laughs> yeah, give me that clean back. No, so, yeah. It was pretty slow, actually. But uh, I can't say I didn't have an opportunity. And I was very disappointed in myself. So, but most of the week, you'd see, we'd see distant elk and, and, uh, I think I had one close encounter. I walked around the corner, kind of walked around the tip of a timber patch, and there was a little raghorn bull standing there staring at me. How far? 30, 35 yards, something oh. like that. And, I mean, he as we locked eyes, and, and he was gone immediately, yeah. so there was no chance. I mean, I'd have been happy to shoot him. I don't care. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he didn't give me that opportunity. So, But really, other than that, we were just seeing some dis distant bulls. We... Saw one decent bull, had went into a timber pocket, and he he didn't. Uh, we weren't sure where he went in, actually, and then we never did. We couldn't get on him. I don't know. We, it was a weird situation. Um, we decided to go the opposite way back because there was a bunch of timber pockets that I've had a lot of success in the past in calling elk and had a lot of elk in them, so we wanted to call those on our way out that evening. So that's what we ended up doing. and. No, no dice. Nobody was playing. So. How about people? Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, there were definitely people up there, but there weren't as many hunters as I was expecting. So, I and it was the last week of the season. Some people were probably over it. Yeah. Man, I didn't go up till, uh, well, I went up on a Saturday afternoon. And there were a fair amount of people all over the weekend, but then the rest of the week, there were just, you'd see you know a couple of people here and there um but it wasn't overcrowded yeah like i've seen it in the past so i've seen uh i know my experience after like the 20th around there roughly yeah seems like a lot of people are aren't hunting like all the time more mm -hmm. like the weekend warrior type thing exactly um, no, i totally agree yeah yeah and 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 there's many years i wouldn't even leave till the 20 i wouldn't even mess with hunting early right at all well that's kind of how i am and well a lot of it's due to antelope hunting early too True. but yeah I, I agree i think people have that itch all year long and they want to get out there as soon as the season's open yeah and there's nothing wrong with that but yeah i think if you've got the patience to hunt that last week yeah to hold out to hold, to hold <laughs> out, right? There's always stuff Which to do. Which didn't work out for me this year, but anyways, the last two days of the season, I was by myself, and that's when I finally started to find some bulls, and I was walking a bald hillside, had a six-point bull, small six-point, he wasn't very big, uh, come out, and had I seen him earlier, I feel like I maybe could have got on him a little bit, I had called him to me. But I was just stranded out. There was not even any sagebrush. It was just kind of a grassy hill. And, mm. and he was in the same type of terrain. And he just was walking and looking and just kind of solo. I felt like, shoot, if I'd have had somewhere to hide and throw up a decoy, I'm pretty sure I could have called him right over to me. But anyway, so then the last day, uh, I 
was kind of close to that same area. I wanted to go back in there again. Um, seen a lot of elk in there in the past. And I was about four miles in and I start walking up this uh, ridge line. So, so do you, are you four miles from where you're camping? You walking in every day? Yeah. Well, I was, so I was hitting different areas. Like there's about four or five different spots where usually I'll find elk in one of those spots. Yeah. So they were all, you know, some of them are only less than a mile to get into. And then some of them are up to five miles to get to where you want to start hunting at. Uh, and you never the, spike in? I have. Yeah. I did not this year, but I have in past years. Yeah. And, you know, it's worth it for sure if a guy wants to do that, yeah. definitely. But just wasn't, I didn't have it in me this year. I don't guess. I don't know. But it's not that bad. You know, the trail's not bad getting in and out. It's just a long ways. I mean, yeah. that's a long ways to walk in and out every day, yeah. four or five miles. But that's what I did. But, and it worked. I mean, I got in, I'm walking up this hill. I was trying to get up to a ridge line. It was right after daybreak, and I wanted to be able to glass because the canyon was fairly steep. Uh, and like I say, the trail's in the bottom, so walking up, it's not too bad. But the walk up the ridge lines is is an effort Good for pull. sure. Yeah, definitely. So I was cussing myself all the way up to this ridge line and thinking, what am I doing? But I just, there was some timber, there was a small timber pocket right top, and I just got... I bet you I didn't take two steps in that timber pocket and a bull ripped, ripped a bugle in there. I was like, oh, man. How close was he? Uh, under 100 yards, mm -hmm. for sure. And and I anyway, so I dropped down, so I had my bow on my pack, and I'm scrambling to get, get ready. And I get my bow off, and I stand up, and he's standing there at like 80 yards just staring at me. And I'm like, you are got to be kidding oh, no. me. But it was through timber. And I, I knew he had me pegged, but it, so I just dropped back down just to my movement, knees. Yeah, not he, so much. He didn't know what I was. I, I'm sure of it because he kept come. He cautiously was coming towards me, and I was like, "Oh man, this is going to work." So I start ranging trees and stuff. So real quick, let yes. me ask you: Do you think he heard you? Because elk are noisy. Do you think he right. heard you? So he was investigating because you just got in there. I, you know, maybe, I mean, I thought that too, and it could be, but it was kind of, it was pretty grassy on the floor of uh -huh. the, uh, okay. because I had literally, now once you were into the timber, it was dry and yeah, crunchy yeah. and yeah. stuff, but I had barely just taken two steps, but it was super grassy. So I don't know if he heard me, he could have, you know, I yeah. don't know, it was right after daylight. So I wasn't trying to make, I was trying to not make a lot of noise. Yeah. So I wasn't super noisy. I just think it was a, the timing is yeah. how I felt. I think he just was ripping a bugle off. And uh, anyway, <laughs> so he'd stop and he'd look down the right trying to find me again, you know, and, and he'd walk a few more steps and look again. And pretty soon I could tell he's going to come out in an opening. So I, I started ranging trees and he kind of headed to my right broadside and there was one tree i ranged at 25 yards well i knew he was behind that so he came out behind that tree and i pulled back as he was coming out from behind the tree and i was thinking he's like 30 yards and he had and he stopped with the course limbs in the way so i had to wait and uh then he takes two more steps so i'm okay 30 yards so i take a shot at him and i couldn't tell if i hit him or not and he took off and it, and <laughs> when he caught me i didn't even have a, a reed in my mouth or anything so i ended up cow calling with just my voice and got him to stop again and i took another shot just guessing the yardage it was about i guess at like 50 yards is what i was thinking and he was kind of quartering away from me i hit a i when i shot i seen him hunch up i was like oh man i hit him good that time so he took off running and I went up there, found my first arrow. It looks like I probably shot right underneath him the first shot, mm -hmm. I guess. And I ranged back to where I was at. It was 42 yards. And so I had shot him for 30. So I think I just went right underneath his belly is what uh. I think. And my, you know, I found my arrow was stuck in a little log on the ground and stuff. Then I went over to my other one and I saw it in the, on the ground. I picked it up. There's blood on the fletching. I was like, oh, man, I hit him. You know, I was pretty happy, but I was a little suspect because it didn't go like it was right where i'd shot at and so i thought well shoot i don't know if i hit him very well but there's blood on the it was weird too there's blood on the broadhead blood on the fletchings but the shaft was looked pretty clear i didn't couldn't really see any blood on it so i think what i had ended up doing was hit him low 
And I grace his brisket, and then the Fletchings caught blood as they uh, went by. Yeah, That's yeah. the only thing I can think of. He did bleed. I followed blood trail for 150 yards before it kind of stopped. He didn't act. He didn't act. Not. I didn't get to see him for very long, but he didn't act hit at yeah. all. You know, when I when I was able to see him, he was just running up and. Um, you know, he was gradually going up uphill when I saw him, mm-hmm. and that's what the br- blood trail did was going up. So, so I spent that was well. I shot him before eight o'clock in the morning, and I searched. I don't know till five o'clock that afternoon, I, until I ran out of blood, and then I started guessing where he might be at. Yeah, and he just wasn't in any of those spots, and so that mm-hmm. was the end of my hunt. I came home. Was that the last day? It was not. The next day was the last day, but uh, I needed to get back. I, I could have went one more day, but, man, when I was looking for him all day, I was up and down and up, and in my legs, it was the end of the hunt. I was just done. Yeah. You know, I'd been there seven days, and yeah. and my legs were toast, so mm. I figured, you know, I got my opportunity. <laughs> I'm just going to call it. So, And it's not like I've seen a lot of elk in there either. Yeah. I'd seen those two bull, the bull the day before. And this bull, which may have been the same bull I was thinking after the fact. I'm uh, not sure. Yeah. Um, they were fairly close to each other. So. Gotcha. And they were by themselves. He was by himself the night before, and then this one was by himself, too. So I don't know if it's the same bull or not. But hmm. anyway, so that was the story of my hunt. Yeah. I need it. I we need both it. do. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We still yeah. have more hunts to go. So. Yeah, we do. And... It's not the first year I didn't kill an elk. I'm bummed. You know, I mean, I was, I went for many, 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 many years with always killing. Right. And it, and it, I haven't lost my drive, but I know I've had, even though my knees had challenges for the last few years mm-hmm. and stuff, I was really thinking this year, very optimistic. Right. But it is hunting and things happen for a reason. Right. And hopefully, you know, all the situations with, it brought me back. Everything goes positive and everything. So right. We'll just exactly. keep rolling along. Yep. Life's more important than hunting for sure. So That's true. Yeah. I, that, I mean, so. yeah. I mean, I had the option of staying. I'm like, no. Right. It wasn't even kind of a question. Right. You know? <laughs> so. so you said your nephew was up there. Did he yeah. Did he get to hunt much? Uh, yeah. He got to hunt. Um, um, and he got into a little bit of elk. Um he did also sit on the wallow. Oh, okay. And um, um, he had a good time. He's he's a manager for a, a large corporation, and his boss was coming of all weeks. Oh. So it turned his week of hunting into just a few days. So he's pretty bummed. But, gotcha. Um, you know, um, since since my son passed away, I haven't really had. You know, I didn't have a son. Sure. So he's kind of the closest thing I have to a son. Yeah. So we've kind of make it a pack this year that we just need to start every year doing a hunt together, whatever it Good. is. Good. And so yeah, and and we were kind of hoping it was that hunt. Right. But um, you know, next year we'll just we'll figure out and do something. Sure. So. Well, good. Yeah, yeah that that's awesome. It was fun. We did because he he moved away for he was up in Washington for um, he got transferred up there. Okay. Um. And he just got back um, last year, so he just this first year he gets to hunt as a resident. Got you. And uh, um, so yeah, it was fun, and he really got the itch. He killed his first uh, first deer uh, buck, I should say. He had killed a doe in the years past. Mm-hmm. With his job, you know, he's manager for like I said for big company, and mm-hmm. and so they keep him pretty busy. But yep. now he's getting to the point now that um, he's has a little more time off and stuff good um but it, he went up solo by himself and and killed a, a nice buck cool pretty stoked about it yeah if nothing else you know and i've had other friends who they find big bucks and they they don't a lot of times get them killed nothing wrong with that right. but to me you know getting some things under your belt Right. Definitely gives you confidence. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, and and totally agree. so I told him, and he he made his mind up beforehand. He says, "I'm just gonna shoot the first buck I get a chance to shoot," and it was res- you know respectable bu- uh, buck for sure. Um, but he's really made his confidence level way up, mm-hmm. and uh, gave him that kind of that passion too to you know really want to keep doing it. Right. So right. Cool. You know, no, you've seen good. that, I'm sure, like in your 
son-in-law especially yep. who just started you know shooting a bow yep. um he's hunted a lot of years but start shooting a bow and he gets some kills under his belt yep. and um, he's really got the itch he does and he's not the guy that's got to hold out for you know he's just happy to kill something yeah. so which is yeah. cool yeah so he'll get more and more hopefully under his belt and yeah and keep rolling with that deal but yeah, yeah. it is fun to watch absolutely sure. yeah it is fun to watch yeah yeah so but. anyway that was a recap <sighs> yeah that's all right i know we got some videos coming out here soon yeah hopefully we'll get the get the hunting out of the way and then I'll, we'll do our little series of there won't be any elk in our I know the season series wah, this year, wah, but wah. hopefully we have some mule deer coming too. <laughs> yeah. Piles of antelope, you guys already know that, but yeah, uh, yeah. So that's that's kind of next step. So we're on to at least I'm on to muzzleloader. Yeah, mule deer. I've got some lead archery hunts, and I haven't decided if, uh, what I want to do for sure. Yeah, um, with work and everything, and I'm trying to get my trophy room done. Yeah, how's that coming? Good. Yeah, yeah, it's coming along. Can be done by Thanksgiving real dang close <laughs> that's the goal i know and, and yeah i mean i real dang close i i had a really good week good. with getting stuff done windows because yeah. for those of you who don't know what i bought a uh an older home mm -hmm. and remodeled completely remodeled and john's got a chance to see that he didn't get to see the before so for people that didn't see it before it's hard harder to appreciate I cannot tell you how many people that came over now have come into the house and went, oh, my gosh, I can't believe. And they mm. says, when I first saw what you bought, I thought you were an idiot, <laughs> you know. I could look past, well, you've seen the area. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, uh, the, where it's uh, uh, loca located down by the, closer to the river, it, the, I just love the location. Yeah, absolutely. It's but beautiful. I, I just looked through all the crap. You know, the right. 38 years the other people lived there at, of, um, I shouldn't say crap. I mean, it was stuff. But they, they downsized so much that a lot of stuff was left. And I bought it as is. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I think, what did I take on at right. my age? But, <laughs> but we're having fun with it and making it the way we want. And then we added on um, another 1,200 square feet for... A great room, family room, trophy yeah. room, whatever you want to call it. Got some awesome ideas that are all play, taking, uh, coming along there. Starting to take it. shape. Yeah, 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 for sure. Very and, cool. And um, uh, yeah, I think I'm being very optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> that you know we got once they get the outside here in the next week, I'll have all the outside pretty much done. Mm -hmm. And I have a few more windows to change out. Which I never changed old windows out to new windows. I put new windows in, mm -hmm. you know, in a new construction. Mm -hmm. um, and I have done some, but I didn't know how this was going to take place. And it actually went super smooth. Good. Yeah. Good. So, anyway. But once it gets shelled in, then the inside, I've already done some inside stuff, but I don't think it's going to be as bad as... Right. I think maybe everyone else is. Right. I don't know. Maybe I'm being too optimistic. Yeah, know. you still got seven weeks or so. Yeah. Till Thanksgiving. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and if, you know, my goal is I do want to have a Christmas tree out there. So, let's say I do miss Thanksgiving. I mean, I still want to have, and we'll probably end up doing a podcast. Yes, definitely. Maybe Once you get there. that done, we'll definitely go show it off. So, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. So. All right, brother. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. I got to go to work for a week. Yeah. Well, we but all have to do that, I unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're done pouting. Yeah, we're done pouting. So we can Big move smiles on. again. Right. <laughs> next week we'll... Uh, yeah, I, well, I think we got, we got a guest coming on here we, this next week. Yeah. Cool. So. Awesome. We'll start thinking muzzleloader. Yeah. Start. Yeah. Which, yeah, yeah, that'll be a good one. Yeah. So. Oh, well, we hope it's a good one. Oh, it'll be a good one, John. I know. It'll be fun. <laughs> I'm hoping to sneak out there and film for you. I know. Too. Me too. That'll be a lot of, a lot of fun. Hopefully yeah. you make it. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, man. All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks again. for checking th us out again. And keep smashing the like button. Yes, and subscribe. we appreciate our base support for sure. We need it. Yeah. Appreciate it. Talk soon. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>